Eevee is an incredible render engine if you know how to fully utilize its capabilities. In this video, I will show you how to achieve a cinematic look in your renders using Eevee, starting from the settings to the final stunning result. I must mention that this tutorial is not in-depth, but rather provides an overview of how I typically render my shots. However, you can still follow along and learn some valuable techniques. So, let's dive in. Let's begin with setting up the camera. To access the front view, press the number one on your keyboard. Add a camera by pressing Shift A and enable the gizmo by clicking on the tools menu or pressing T. Split the viewport into two to see the camera view. Press zero to switch to the camera view. I prefer turning off the overlay view to have an unobstructed view, but this is a matter of personal preference. To view only inside the camera view, go to the camera tab, select viewport display, and increase the passepartout value. To achieve a cinematic look, we need to adjust the resolution. Go to the render output properties and change the resolution from the default 1920 by 1080 pixels to 2560 by 1080 pixels. Adjust the frame rate to 24 FPS. For a wide shot, set the focal length to 35 millimeters. Now let's move and rotate the camera to find a visually appealing angle for our scene. If you find the gizmo difficult to use, you can try using the walk navigation mode. To enable this, go to the view option, select navigation, and choose walk navigation. With this mode active, you can control the camera using the W, A, S, and D keys as well as the mouse, just like in a video game. Next, let's move on to the settings. To preview the render, select the Render View option. Then, go to the Render Properties tab and make sure to select Eevee as the render engine. Leave the sampling settings as they are. Enable all the recommended settings listed here. In the Ambient Occlusion section, you can find additional settings to fine-tune the effect. Feel free to adjust them as desired, but for now, we will stick with the default settings. Enable Bloom, again using the default settings. We will address the depth of field later, so leave it unchanged for now. Turn on Screen Space Reflections for reflective surfaces. You can observe the difference on the metal plate when this option is toggled on and off. Additionally, enable Refraction. We will skip Motion Blur for the time being, as we will deal with it later. Open the Volumetric settings and check Volumetric Shadow. Lastly, go to the Shadow section and enable High Bit Depth. Leave the value as it is, as it won't be very noticeable in this render. These settings should suffice for now, but remember that you can always come back and adjust them as your project progresses. Now let's move on to lighting, which is my favorite part. Create a new collection and name it Lights or Lighting. To add a light source to the scene, press Shift A. There are four types of lights you can choose from, but for this particular render, I will only use the sun lamp as the main light source. After adding the sun lamp, go to the Light Properties tab to adjust its settings. Set the strength to 5 to control its intensity. Under the Shadow section, enable Contact Shadows for a smoother shadow appearance. You can increase the angle value to around 35 degrees for softer shadows. Remember, these settings can be tweaked based on your preferences. Rotate the light to find the best angle that complements your scene. Since EV doesn't have indirect lighting like cycles, we can simulate it using an HDRI, High Dynamic Range Image. This not only adds realistic lighting but also serves as a reference for placing our lights. To add an HDRI, open the Shader Editor and change the shader type to World. If you prefer a solid color for the world background, you can adjust it here. However, in this case, we will add an HDRI. Press Shift A and search for Environment Texture. Before proceeding, make sure you have enabled the Node Wrangler add-on in the Preferences menu. To do this, go to Edit, select Preferences, and search for Node Wrangler in the Add-on section. Once enabled, go back to the Shader Editor, select the Environment Texture node, and press Ctrl-T to automatically set up the nodes. These nodes allow you to control the location, rotation, and scale of the HDRI texture. Connect the color output of the node to the color input of the world shader. To add an HDRI, click on the Open button and choose your desired HDRI image. 
You can find free HDRI images on websites like HDRI Haven. Already your scene is looking impressive. To get a better view of the HDRI, temporarily hide the sunlight, rotate the HDRI by adjusting the Z rotation value, and then unhide the sunlight and rotate it to align with the HDRI. Additionally, I recommend setting the angle value to 5 degrees. Experiment with the lights and HDRI until you achieve the desired look. Moving on to the next step, volumetric effects. Adding volumetrics or fog is a straightforward process. First, add a cube and scale it to cover the entire scene. To make it easier to work with in the viewport, select the cube, go to the Object Properties tab, and under the Viewport Display section, choose Wire as the display mode. Now you can see your entire scene again. To create the fog effect, we need to apply a volumetric material to the cube. Select the cube, go to the Shader Editor, and click the New button to create a new material. Name the material as desired. Delete the existing principled BSDF shader and search for Principled Volume. Connect the volume output of the Principled Volume node to the volume input of the Material Output node. Decrease the density to around 0.001. You will immediately notice the difference between the scene with and without volumetrics. Feel free to adjust the color based on your scene requirements. To add more visual interest, you can incorporate additional fog or dust. There are various methods to achieve this, but in this tutorial, we'll use an open VDB file. I'm using a downloaded VDB file from GTM Design, which you can find in the description if you'd like to use it for your project. Similar to the fog we created, add new material to the VDB file and adjust the density and color to your liking. Your scene now has an added layer of depth and atmosphere. Now let's focus on camera settings and animation. Ensure that you have the camera selected. Open the timeline and navigate to the first frame. Enable auto keying and select the active keying set option. Move the camera using walk navigation to create a keyframe, then go to the last frame and position the camera where you want it to be. This will create another keyframe. Move your mouse to the timeline, select all the keyframes by pressing A, and open the keyframe interpolation options by pressing T. Choose the linear option for smooth camera movement. Now press the play button to preview the animation. Great! Let's proceed to set up the depth of field. Select the camera, go to the camera properties tab, and enable depth of field. To focus on the metal plate, choose focus on object and select the plate as the focused object. You can adjust the settings based on your preferences, or you can follow my recommended settings for achieving an anamorphic bokeh effect. Additionally, go to the Render tab, select the Depth of Field section, enable Jitter Camera, and set the Over Blur value to 35%. To add a camera shake effect, you can use a free add-on called Shackify by Ian Hubert, which can be found in the description. I suggest using the wedding presets, decreasing the influence to 0.5, and increasing the scale value to 5. Before we move on to the final step, Go back to your scene and make any necessary adjustments to the settings, lights, or materials. Be creative, and don't be afraid to experiment with different configurations. The final step is compositing and final output settings. Before proceeding, make sure to render a single frame of your scene. Go to Render and select Render Image. Now, let's switch to the compositing workspace. Change the upper view to the image editor. Click on the image icon and search for the viewer node. For the bottom view, switch to the compositor. Enable the Use Nodes option. To view the rendered image in the image editor, we need to add a viewer node. Press Ctrl, Shift and select the Render Layers node, then connect it to the viewer node. Now you can see the rendered image. To add a glow effect, press Shift A and search for the glare node. Change the Streaks option to Fog Glow. 
Feel free to adjust the settings to your liking or follow my recommended values. Lastly, to enhance the visual appeal, add a lens distortion node and enable the fit option. Adjust the settings as follows. Make sure to connect the nodes to the composite node. For the final output, return to the Scene tab. Go to Output Properties and double-check the resolution, number of frames, and frame rate settings. Then, in the Output section, click on the folder icon and select the destination folder for your render. For the file format, instead of rendering as a PNG sequence, I recommend choosing the FFmpeg video format. Open the encoding section, change the container to MPEG-4, and set the output quality to high. Lastly, enable motion blur, set the shutter to 0.1, and the background separation to 10. That's it. Before you start rendering the animation, make sure to save your project. To render the animation, go to Render and select Render Animation. Now sit back and wait for Blender to complete the rendering process. I want to express my gratitude to you for watching this tutorial until the end. You are all amazing. I hope this guide has been helpful to you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.